Now the technical checklist. Now this is literally a checklist. So you take it home. If you have a technical person, give them this. So when, when, you, when you purchase a new domain, right, you want to set a, a handful of protocols to make sure that the emails that you are sending are uh, basically, uh, uh, there are certain protocols that are proving that that's you just to, to keep it as simple as possible, okay? So there are three things, three records that you wanna figure, uh, that you wanna configure on your DNS domain register. So where you registered your domain, that's where you have a DNS. So you wanna configure SPF, DKIM, and DMARC records for that. That's super important because otherwise, uh, you know, someone can introduce themselves as, as, as you, um, yeah, and, and basically the other servers can block your emails and push them into a spam, so your deliverability will go down very hard if you don't have this configured. And again, this is not a webinar about configuring your, your technical aspects to, to, to a domain. You should, all, by the way, you should always do this. No matter if you use cold email outreach tools or you don't, you should always have this in place. So I'm pretty sure if you have a good technical person, they already done it. If not, uh, you, you should definitely do it. Uh, you should always add from name and image. So you know how in, in Outlook and, and, and Gmail G Suite, you have the option to, to add your name, your full name, not your email, but your full name and an image. That really, you know, it's super important when people are, because just, just look at your inbox and go from left to right. What do you see first? You, you see the image, you see the name, you see the subject line. So it's really important to have that. Um, signature, make sure to add a signature. We're gonna talk about that in, in a second, how, how it should look like. And then you should warm up your email with friends and colleagues. So again, if you just, you purchased a domain, you just started your business uh, and, and basically you, uh, you just started blasting people with like 300 emails a day is just not good. It's, it's just not even, you know, it's not even possible, right? You go from, from zero to 300 to 500. It's just, it's something is fishy there, right? So your emails are not going to look like, uh, like they're, they're, um, uh, they're coming from you, right? It's gonna sound like a, a robo took over your account. So what you wanna do, you wanna warm up your email with friends and colleagues, you wanna subscribe. You do like normal email activities. You wanna subscribe to newsletters, et cetera. Uh, and again, don't, you know, push the pedal to the metal, take it slowly, you know, do a few emails a day and then uh, work your way up from there. Avoid spam, okay? So if you're using a shared IP address, that's, that's probably not good for you. Um, is this recorded? Yes, Sean, it's recorded. Uh, use use the free email addresses. So I really don't recommend you use Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail. Like when I see a person, there's just a bunch of people reaching out to me. Hey, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I want to write a, a, a do a co blog with you guys. I want to sell you this, do that. Like, and I see a Gmail, uh, John one two three four five at Gmail dot com. Dude, I'm, you know, you're going into my spam. You're marked as spam, done and over. I'm not even considering your email. If I get the email from a professional. Uh, uh, pr from a professional, basically, that's lengthy, and I never—I don't even know about them. They, they, they haven't even earned the right to talk to me, right? Immediately spam. So these are some of the things that, uh, that you want to avoid. Now, if you have more than two spam words, such as free, get, now, credit card, all that are big no-nos. If you have two spam, more than two spam words, if you have more than two links in your email, guess what? You're, and you're going to end up in spam. So make sure you're conscious about that. Um, if you have lots of images, lots of videos, same thing. Um, if you are emailing, let's say 20 people from Microsoft with the same template, guess what? Their server is gonna block you and that's it. They're not gonna see your email. So do one person from a company and then work your way up, ask for a referral, et cetera. Um, and then you wanna personalize your email with custom fields, which are tokens or variables. I'll give you an example. So what my guys do um, at, at AutoClose they basically would go to your LinkedIn profile when they're building lists. They would go to your LinkedIn profile and take some of the sentences that can correlate to what we are offering and to what we think would make sense for you. So you'd have an entire personalized paragraph that's taken from your LinkedIn. So, it, you know, and if it's a short and sweet email with a very clear call to action, it's it's just, you know, that's that's something you're going to respond to. And now I just want to show you real quick, um, uh, Thomas, you can you can respond to some of the, the um, questions while I do this. Um, okay, let's do desktop two, share. You should be able to see my entire screen. We're gonna click this. Now, there's an interesting tool called um, MailTester. MailTester.com, it's free. 
uh, so you can play around with it. And there's a help article that I'm going to share with you. So there's a there's a, an interesting help article from AutoClose that talks about SBF, DKIM, and how to set it up. So I'm going to share that afterwards. Uh, and then there's a mail tester, uh, a free tool that will tell you what's your score. So as you can see, I I, um, I would send an email to a dedicated email address just to see if if I'm if I'm going to pass the spam filters. So there's a tool called MailTester.com that you can use for that. And if you look at uh, my message, you basically see that, you know, I'm properly uh, authenticated. I'm not going to share more details here, uh, but, uh, but that's, that's basically what you should be, what you should be using.